The world of cybersecurity is one of constant vigilance, a digital battlefield where the lines between good and evil are often blurred. Today, we're diving deep into a particularly shadowy corner of this world, a place where vulnerabilities in software are traded like precious commodities. We would like to reach out to our channel members and say thank you for your support. Both Derek and David Henderson have been instrumental members of our channel. If you have interest in joining TAC Raven Cyber Academy as a member, click the link in the description below. Before we begin, I urge you to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. Your support helps us delve deeper into these critical issues and bring them to light. Together, we can navigate the treacherous terrain of zero-day exploits and arm ourselves with the knowledge to stay ahead of the curve. Imagine a house, its doors secured, windows bolted shut, a seemingly impenetrable fortress. Now imagine a blueprint, a secret plan revealing a hidden flaw in the foundation, a weakness known only to a select few. This, in essence, is a zero-day vulnerability. It's a flaw in software, a chink in the armor of our digital lives, unknown to the developers who built it, and, most importantly, unknown to those who use it. This lack of awareness is what makes zero-day vulnerabilities so dangerous. Like a ticking time bomb, they sit dormant, waiting for the moment to be exploited. These vulnerabilities can exist in any software, from the apps on our smartphones to the complex systems that control our power grids. They are the keys to our digital kingdoms, and in the wrong hands, they can wreak havoc on an unimaginable scale. But who are these individuals lurking in the shadows, these digital mercenaries who trade in vulnerabilities? They are the zero-day brokers, operating in a clandestine marketplace where the only currency is information and the stakes couldn't be higher. Think of them as digital arms dealers, supplying weapons to anyone willing to pay the price. Their motives are varied, ranging from financial gain to espionage to outright chaos. But one thing remains constant. Their actions have far-reaching consequences, impacting individuals, corporations, and even nations. The very nature of zero-day vulnerabilities makes them incredibly difficult to detect. It's like searching for a needle in a haystack that's constantly shifting and changing, but the difficulty in detection only adds to their allure in the underground market. The more valuable the vulnerability, the higher the price it commands. And silence, as they say, is golden. Discretion is paramount in this world, and transactions are shrouded in secrecy, taking place in the darkest corners of the internet. Picture a bustling marketplace, not one of tangible goods, but of whispers and shadows, where information itself is the most coveted commodity. This is the digital underworld of the zero-day market. It's a realm shrouded in secrecy, where buyers and sellers operate under the cloak of anonymity, their identities obscured by layers of encryption and misdirection. The very air crackles with a mixture of paranoia and opportunity, a digital bazaar where fortunes can be made or lost in the blink of an eye. The transactions that take place in this clandestine market are as varied as the players themselves. On one end of the spectrum, you have state-sponsored actors, intelligence agencies with deep pockets seeking to acquire zero-day vulnerabilities for espionage or sabotage. These government entities operate with a level of sophistication and resources that dwarf most other players in the market. Their motives are often geopolitical, driven by a desire to gain an edge over adversaries or maintain control over their own citizens. Then there are the cyber criminal organizations, motivated purely by profit. They operate like any other criminal enterprise, seeking to maximize their gains with minimal risk. These groups are responsible for the ransomware attacks, data breaches, and other cyber crimes that dominate the headlines. They're constantly on the lookout for new vulnerabilities to exploit, and the zero-day market provides them with a steady supply of digital weapons to fuel their illicit activities. And as the demand for zero-day vulnerabilities grows, so too does the price, creating a lucrative black market that's becoming increasingly difficult to ignore. But it's not just governments and criminals who frequent this digital bazaar. Security researchers and ethical hackers also play a role, albeit a complex and often controversial one. They scour the digital landscape for vulnerabilities, not to exploit them, but to alert software vendors so that patches can be developed and deployed. However, their presence in the zero-day market is a double-edged sword. While their intentions may be noble, the information they gather can easily fall into the wrong hands, potentially putting users at risk. 
The very act of researching and disclosing vulnerabilities can inadvertently tip off malicious actors, giving them a head start in developing exploits. It's a delicate balancing act, one that requires careful consideration of the potential consequences. The individuals who navigate the treacherous waters of the zero-day market are a diverse bunch, each with their own motivations, methods, and moral compasses. Some are driven by greed, others by ideology, and still others by a thirst for power or notoriety. But they all share one thing in common, a deep understanding of the digital world and the ability to exploit its weaknesses for their own gain. Ankit. One could argue that these brokers are merely cogs in a much larger machine, that they are simply responding to the forces of supply and demand that dictate the flow of information in the digital age. After all, if there were no buyers for zero-day exploits, there would be no market for them. But this argument ignores the very real harm that these vulnerabilities can cause when they fall into the wrong hands. The brokers who traffic in these digital weapons are not merely passive observers. They are active participants in a system that puts countless individuals and organizations at risk. Let's delve into the profiles of these key players. First, we have the elite hackers, the masterminds behind the discovery and development of many zero-day exploits. Ankit. These individuals are often driven by a thirst for knowledge and a desire to push the boundaries of what's possible in the digital realm. They see themselves as explorers, charting the uncharted territories of cyberspace and uncovering its hidden treasures. However, their skills come at a price. Elite hackers are highly sought after by both governments and criminal organizations, and they often command exorbitant fees for their services. The allure of wealth and power can be difficult to resist, and many elite hackers find themselves drawn into the murky world of cyber espionage and cybercrime. Next, we have the information brokers, the intermediaries who connect buyers and sellers in the zero-day market. Ankit, they are the ultimate networkers, possessing vast contacts within both the cybersecurity community and the criminal underworld. These brokers often operate in the shadows, carefully cultivating relationships and building trust over many years. They are masters of discretion, adept at facilitating transactions without revealing the identities of their clients. Information brokers are driven by a variety of motives. Some are motivated purely by profit, seeking to capitalize on the growing demand for zero-day exploits. Others see themselves as playing a more neutral role, facilitating the flow of information in a market that they believe is inevitable. And still others are driven by a sense of loyalty to their clients, providing them with access to valuable information that they believe will give them an edge in the digital arms race. Then, there are the gray hat hackers, a controversial group that occupies the moral gray area between ethical hackers and cyber criminals. They often discover vulnerabilities on their own, but instead of reporting them to software vendors, they sell them to the highest bidder, whether it be a government agency, a criminal organization, or a private company. Gray hat hackers justify their actions by arguing that they are simply exposing the flaws in software and that it is up to the vendors to fix them. They believe that their actions, while controversial, ultimately make the digital world a safer place by forcing companies to take security more seriously. Finally, we have the cyber criminal organizations, the ultimate beneficiaries of the zero day market. These groups are highly organized and well-funded, often operating with impunity from countries with lax cybercrime laws. They use zero-day exploits to carry out a wide range of illicit activities, including ransomware attacks, data breaches, and financial fraud. Ankit cybercriminal organizations are driven solely by profit, and they have no qualms about inflicting harm on individuals or organizations to achieve their goals. They are a constant threat to the digital ecosystem, and their activities have a significant impact on the global economy. The zero-day market exists in a moral and ethical quagmire, a shadowy reflection of the digital age's complexities. It's a realm where the lines between right and wrong, ethical and unethical, blur into shades of gray. The very existence of this market raises profound questions about responsibility, accountability, and the unintended consequences of our interconnected world. Sophie. On one hand, you have the argument that knowledge in and of itself is not inherently good or bad. It's how that knowledge is used that determines its ethical implications. Proponents of this view argue that the zero-day market, while undoubtedly risky, can actually improve cybersecurity 
by incentivizing companies to find and fix vulnerabilities more quickly. After all, if a company knows that its software is being actively targeted by criminals and intelligence agencies, it's more likely to prioritize security and invest in robust defenses. This argument is often used to justify the actions of ethical hackers and bug bounty hunters who discover and report vulnerabilities in exchange for financial rewards. They argue that their actions, while potentially controversial, ultimately make the digital world a safer place by forcing companies to take security more seriously. Sophie. On the other hand, there's the undeniable reality that the zero-day market fuels a dangerous arms race, empowering criminals, terrorists, and rogue states with the tools to wreak havoc on an unprecedented scale. Every zero-day vulnerability that's sold on the black market represents a potential threat to individuals, businesses, and critical infrastructure. It's a market where the potential for harm far outweighs any perceived benefits. The ethical dilemma deepens when we consider the role of governments in this shadowy world. Intelligence agencies driven by national security interests are often the biggest buyers of zero-day exploits. They use these vulnerabilities to gather intelligence, conduct surveillance, and even launch cyber attacks against their adversaries. But this pursuit of national security often comes at the expense of individual privacy and security. Sophie. When governments stockpile zero-day vulnerabilities instead of disclosing them to software vendors, they are essentially choosing to leave millions of users vulnerable to attack. Then there's the question of responsibility. Who is ultimately accountable when a zero-day exploit is used to cause harm? Is it the developer who created the vulnerable software? Is it the broker who sold the exploit to the highest bidder? Or is it the attacker who ultimately used it to cause harm? The answer, like most things in the world of cybersecurity, is rarely clear-cut. It's a complex web of interconnected actors and motivations, where assigning blame is often difficult, if not impossible. The ethical debate surrounding the zero-day market is further complicated by the lack of transparency and regulation. It's a market that operates largely in the shadows, with little oversight or accountability. This lack of transparency makes it difficult to assess the true scope of the problem and to develop effective solutions. In the ever-evolving landscape of cybersecurity, where threats lurk in every shadow and vulnerabilities emerge with alarming frequency, defending against zero-day exploits requires a multifaceted approach, a digital fortress built on vigilance, adaptability, and a deep understanding of the adversary. It's a constant arms race, a perpetual game of cat and mouse where staying one step ahead is paramount. Liam. The first line of defense in this digital battleground is awareness. Knowledge, as they say, is power, and understanding the nature of zero-day exploits, the motivations of those who wield them, and the potential consequences of a successful attack is crucial. Organizations and individuals alike must prioritize cybersecurity education, staying abreast of the latest threats, vulnerabilities, and mitigation strategies. Think of it as equipping your digital fortress with the most advanced surveillance systems capable of detecting even the faintest tremors of an impending attack. Next comes the implementation of robust cybersecurity measures. This includes keeping software up to date with the latest security patches, using strong and unique passwords for all accounts, and employing multi-factor authentication whenever possible. Liam, think of these measures as reinforcing the walls of your fortress, making it that much harder for attackers to breach your defenses but simply building a strong fortress is not enough. We must also be prepared for the inevitable moment when the walls are breached. This is where incident response planning comes into play. Having a well-defined plan in place to detect, contain, and remediate a cyber attack can mean the difference between a minor inconvenience and a catastrophic event. It's the equivalent of having a well-trained and equipped security force within your fortress, ready to respond swiftly and decisively to any incursion. In the realm of zero-day exploits, where traditional signature-based detection methods often fall short, organizations must adopt more proactive and sophisticated defense strategies. This includes embracing threat intelligence sharing platforms, where organizations can share information about emerging threats and vulnerabilities, effectively creating a collective defense network. Liam. It's akin to establishing a network of watchtowers, each keeping a watchful eye on the horizon and sharing information about potential threats, allowing for a coordinated and effective response. 
Furthermore, organizations should consider implementing advanced security solutions that utilize artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms to detect anomalous activity and potential threats in real time. These solutions act as intelligent sentinels, constantly analyzing network traffic for suspicious patterns and behavior, flagging potential threats before they can cause significant damage. But technology alone is not enough. We must also address the human element of cybersecurity. Employees at all levels of an organization must be trained to identify and report potential phishing attacks, social engineering attempts, and other forms of cybercrime. They are the first line of defense, the human sensors within the fortress capable of detecting and reporting suspicious activity that might otherwise slip through the cracks. Liam, in the face of increasingly sophisticated and determined adversaries, collaboration is key. Governments, private industry, and the cybersecurity research community must work together to share information, develop best practices, and coordinate responses to cyber threats. This includes establishing clear channels of communication, fostering trust and transparency, and working towards a common goal of a safer and more secure digital world. And finally, we must acknowledge that cybersecurity is not merely a technical challenge, but a societal one. As our reliance on technology continues to grow, so too does the importance of fostering a culture of cybersecurity awareness and responsibility. This includes educating individuals about the importance of online safety, promoting ethical hacking and responsible vulnerability disclosure, and advocating for stronger cybersecurity legislation and enforcement. Defending against zero-day exploits is not a battle that can be won overnight. It's an ongoing process, a continuous journey of improvement and adaptation. But by embracing a proactive and comprehensive approach to cybersecurity, by fostering a culture of awareness and collaboration, we can build a more resilient digital world. One where the shadows of zero-day exploits hold less power and the promise of a secure future burns bright. As we've journeyed through the intricate and often unsettling world of zero-day exploits, one thing remains clear. The digital landscape is constantly evolving and the only constant is change itself. Our exploration today is just a glimpse into a vast and complex ecosystem where the stakes are high and the consequences of inaction can be devastating. Remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more deep dives into the world of cybersecurity. Your support helps us shed light on these critical issues and empower individuals and organizations to navigate the digital landscape safely and securely. Stay vigilant stay informed, and together, let's build a safer and more secure digital future.